Well, hey folks, realize you with Jermithlin, these are 10 more talents that WWE have dropped the ball with. Where if you like my previous list, you'll like this one. Shout out to Avelina Tweets for actually suggesting that I do more of these. And other, don't get me wrong, other people have said it, but she was actually the first one to suggest you should do more videos like this. Because there have been plenty of talents and even just current talents that WWE have dropped the ball with. Not that everybody can be a main eventer, not everybody's going to be a champion, not everybody's going to be a top tier performer that's going to earn a couple million a year <coughs> or be featured all the time. But there are plenty of times where some of these talents you're like, oh yeah, they're still employed, or oh yeah, you know, they, they've been with the company as long as they have. And I am going to probably do another list, and then I'm also probably going to keep this series going by talking about some talents that, you know, from the past that are no longer with the company that were like, wow, that was a really shit run that they had, or oh, they could have been used so much better, why weren't they used better? And it will also be continuing series like Which Was Worse and stuff like that, so, and might even branch into movies for that, so... Anyway, plugs out of the way. Let's get to these talents. And I'm going to just list my reasons. This might I might do a few rants during this, but we'll see. Anyway, Mickey James during her second run. Yes, her first run had the Mickey James thing and not being utilized all that much from like later 2008, early 2009 until the end of her run. Even though she beat Michelle McCool and won it for all of, at Royal Rumble 2010 for all of like three weeks, because that's a great payoff to that storyline. Fat shaming, it's what Vince loves, and also Kevin Dunn. The, yeah, Kevin Dunn can fuck right off. There's my one shot at Kevin Dunn per show. So, Mickey James, though, during her second run, had a great match with Asuka, really, really good match with Asuka at uh, TakeOver Toronto, I believe, <clears throat> um, which which was very well done. Yeah, it, it kind of ended out of nowhere, but it was a great performance. And it's not like Mickie James wasn't performing and wrestling after she left WWE, but she hadn't been performing a ton since taking some time off for, after her Impact run. And her Impact run was actually pretty damn good. Sands a few bad bookings and, oh yeah, the train incident. Let's never forget the whole train incident. That was terrible. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, YouTube James Storm, uh, Mickey James Train, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And that's not a knock against James Storm or, or Mickey James. It's just a knock against whoever booked the thing. Going back to it, though, <laughs> Mickey got signed to a full-time contract, I think soon after that match, which is good. She was revealed to be the masked, um, masked wrestler that was helping Alexa Bliss. And that ended up leading to, you know, her aligning with Alexa Bliss. And then she turned and was babyface and was battling against her and just, you know, kind of in random tag matches, not really being featured a whole bunch on some weeks. I mean, and she still could perform well. And it wasn't like she was old. I mean, I know that a lot of people will say, oh, at 37, 38, that's around the age I believe she's at, that, oh, she's too old. I mean... There are plenty of women that perform well into their 40s. WWE just at times tends to say, oh, you know, these women are old. Let's push them out the door. And they're not old if they can still perform well. But Mickey James, one, should have gotten a title run by this point. I mean, I'm sorry. Alexa didn't need all those title runs. This is not, this is not knocking Alexa Bliss. Charlotte didn't need all those title runs or those lengthy title runs. You could have given Mickey a nice little month or two long reign. <clears throat> You know, months or two, you know, months or two reign with either the Raw or the SmackDown Women's Title, and it wouldn't have affected anything. But yeah, it could all just be timing. I mean, she's mainly just there to put people over, but some weeks she's not even there. Now, currently, I guess she's dealing with an injury. As of recording this video, I'm recording this a couple days before uh, the Go Home Raw before SummerSlam. So who knows? She she can make an appearance by the time um by the time this video goes up. But she hasn't really been used all that well and flip-flopping from heel to face and heel to face and aligning with Alexa and then battling her and then suddenly aligning with her for no reason, you know, again for no reason. It just makes Mickey seem ridiculous. Now, she just, to me, she deserves better, but I get that she's cast in a role where she's mainly going to get some wins but put people over. That's fine. I just feel with somebody of her, with somebody of her caliber that she deserves a whole lot better. That's just my personal opinion. And then we'll move on to number nine, the Singh Brothers. Hands up if you actually forgot that the Singh brothers were at one time the Bollywood boys and could have been used well as a tag team. I mean, I actually had to remind myself. Now, one of the Singhs, I believe it's Sunil, is actually dealing with an injury. <clears throat> torn torn ACL, or I believe it's a torn ACL, and hopefully he recovers. He actually seems to be doing just fine, and maybe we'll be back soon. Maybe this could lead to the Singhs distancing themselves from gender and being on 205 Live... 
or being on Raw in the tag division or going back to SmackDown and being in the tag division. They're a really good team. Yes, they're small guys. Yes, they would probably get bumped around a lot, but I think that if you build them right, and you know you have them against jobbers and stuff like that, to build them up for a few weeks, you could use them and have them be tag team champions at some point. The current champions, as you know, the current champions that they've had, the last couple champions, Matt Hardy and Bray Wyatt, and I mean, I love those guys, but they were a stopgap <clears throat> to be tag team champions, and then the B team. B team with having just a ridiculous theme now, but it actually does fit for them. Those were the last two tag champions on Raw. And then you got the Bludgeon Brothers and the Usos on SmackDown, which are two more credible teams, don't get me, don't get me wrong. That's not knocking Matt and Bray, but they were just put together just because. But the Singh Brothers, to me, could be used so much better. I mean, at first when they were in the Cruiserweight Classic and then they were used as the Bollywood Boys and then they were suddenly, you know, recast as the Singh Brothers and Jinder's Helpers, it worked. But the problem is, is now the whole thing's been beyond stale. Hopefully Sunil recovers and maybe they can team them back up because they deserve a whole lot more. That's just, that's just my personal opinion, though. And number eight, Mike Kanellis. Again, hands up if you forgot Mike Kanellis was still employed by WWE. I, I like Mike Kanellis. I liked him in Ring of Honor. I liked him in Impact when him and <coughs> Maria were, you know, a duo. Obviously, they're married. I mean, that would kind of be the whole point of being a husband and wife duo. Yes, Mike Kanellis has um, talked about his battles with addiction. He's gotten clean. That's tremendous. And Maria's uh, currently... Currently, I think, still on maternity leave. I don't think she's had... Has she had the kid? I think she might have had the kid. I'm not really sure. That's been one of, like, the... Like, the call, like the quietest signings that they've had. Like, one of the quietest signings. Because they had... What was it? Like, Mike Kanellis and Maria showed up at Money in the Bank last year. And then Sami Zayn interrupted them. And they had that little feud where canellis would win a match but then lose and whatever and that feud went absolutely nowhere which describes a lot of Sami Zayn's feuds yeah Sami Zayn should be used a whole lot better too <clears throat> that one that that's just that's just a whole nother thing right there where Sami Zayn I mean injuries have gotten in the way but at the same time the guy should have been used a whole lot better I mean he really has but back to Mike canellis the guy was never going to be more than maybe a one-time IC or U.S. champion but the fact that they haven't even used the guy, like, at all. He's had, what, has he had a match on Raw this year? I, I'm really trying to rack my brain. Somebody look that up, because I'm trying to rack my brain about that. Mike Canellos and Maria may not be around after their contracts are up, which would be unfortunate, because I think you could capitalize with this duo, <clears throat> even if he'll never be a world champion, he doesn't need to be. I really think that you should have put him in NXT. Honestly, I think you should have. Mike Canellis could have flourished a whole lot more there. Thankfully, he is clean. Hopefully, he's given a shot. Because the guy is a really good athlete and does deserve it. And him and Maria have, uh, you know, provide a good dynamic for Raw or SmackDown, whatever show they're on. But yeah, it just it just seems like such a missed opportunity with Mike Canellis after he got clean. I don't know. I just, it, why have people if you're not going to use them? Oh, you use them on the house shows. Great. Only the people in attendance are going to see that. If you're not going to use them on TV here and there, why bother having them? <clears throat> and then we go to number seven, Curtis Axel. Yes, he's currently part of the B team and the most over that he's been in about four, no, five goddamn years. Because it's been about five years since he was uh, he became IC champion. Yes, never forget that. That he was once Intercontinental champion and no one gave a shit. Not that Curtis Axel isn't a great athlete because he is. Son of Mr. Perfect. He's never going to be Mr. Perfect and they shouldn't have tried to make him that. But he <clears throat> is a really good athlete and was never eliminated from, um, you know, I believe the 2015 Royal Rumble, if I remember right. That was, that was pretty funny. 2015, 2016. I think it was a 2015 Rumble. That was pretty ridiculous. But it was still funny that he ran with it. But Curtis Axel, I mean, you're looking as like, one, Michael McGillicuddy was a stupid name that they gave him. Absolutely stupid. That was never going to, as, as Jim Cornette would say, pass the name test. And... Honestly, Axel deserves much better than he's gotten. Should he have ever been WWE champion? Should he have ever been Universal champion? No. No. And I'm not saying that. But they treated his IC title reign like he was such a joke. I mean, when Big E beat him, and I love Big E, no one cared. And because it's like, oh, he lost. I can't remember if they lost on, if, if it was on main event or if it was on Raw. <clears throat> but it was one of the two. And it's like Big E just beat him, and it's like, okay. 
Okay, and then the axle went right down the card and teamed with right back, and that went nowhere. Right back soul. Um, and yeah, now he's with the B team. I mean, but it's like there was like the social outcast at one point, which actually could a group that could have worked, but it didn't because they were they even got t shirts and then they were not never used. It just seems like they could have used them a whole lot better. And just they just forgot about him or whatever. I mean, obviously they think he's an asset because they still have him around. They haven't released him, but it's just he he's in a comedy thing here when he could be taken seriously as a competitor. Competitor, but the problem and easy for me to say, you know, such a, such a complicated word. I know the best words. <clears throat> um, he can't he can't be taken seriously anymore though. I think the B team thing is about. I'm not gonna say his last hurrah. I'm not saying he's gonna be released. But just looking at the booking and everything, it's no wonder he's taken as such a goddamn joke. And number six, Ruby Riot. Now look, I know, I know that Ruby hasn't been with the company too long. I think she was in one takeover match during her entire NXT run. I could be wrong, but it was Asuka, Ruby, and Nikki? I think it was Asuka, Ruby, and Nikki, if I remember right. Um, <clears throat> and that was at the first takeover Chicago last year. And that was pretty ridiculous that that was like the one takeover match that she had. Cause I don't think she was part of that four way that they had at, and back in January. Cause I know, I know the Iconics were there and I think Nikki Cross is also involved in that, but the whole point is, is okay. What, what if she was involved in one or, you know, five takeover matches? Ruby always seemed like she was passed over for a lot of opportunities, and then they brought her up with uh, Lib Morgan and Sarah Logan. Lib Morgan, Sarah Logan, I thought I said Lib, Lord, uh, Lib uh, Logan for a reason, which actually would be a funny fusion. Fusion, ha, no, not going to try to do that because I don't have a co-host here, and I would look more ridiculous than I already do by continuing to talk about it. <laughs> so they bring up the Riot Squad, and... I was for it. I mean, they had Absolution at one point, and then suddenly, you know, the Riot Squad shows up on SmackDown where you're like, cool, the shows are copying each other. But Ruby Riot leading a group and her years as Heidi Lovelace and the fact that Liv was a project that they were trying to bring up, and yet Sarah Logan, who, yes, was Crazy Mary Dobson and then was brought, and then was brought up, but she's still a project too. Ruby was the veteran of that group. I mean, still is. And did have that injury, and now they, they brought her up. Uh, you know, she's back. She just appeared on the most recent Raw, which was great. Great to see Ruby back. <coughs> it just seems like they just haven't known what to do with her. And I don't quite get it. She should have had a bit of a better run in the Rumble, the Women's Royal Rumble. Maybe they'll start using her better after SummerSlam. But as of right now, she's been horribly misused. I mean, just after outside of that injury, there were some weeks she wasn't even on shows. She had that match against Charlotte, which actually wasn't that bad of a match. It was Fastlane, I believe. Fastlane earlier this year. And then I think was just thrown in the uh, Women's Battle Royal. Not everybody is going to be on top all the time, but I feel like Ruby could be somebody they could use better <clears throat> than always relying on Alexa. Now, I love Ronda. I'm not saying that Ronda isn't a bigger star, ma bigger mainstream star than Ruby. But you can have your cake and eat it too, and you can use Ruby also. Now that she's back, we'll see what happens. But until this point, it's been a very hit and miss, stop, you know, stop start thing with her. And I'm kind of disappointed. Hopefully, I end up being proven wrong. Now, Alicia Fox. I'm going to be very brief here. I've never been the biggest fan of Alicia Fox. But for her tenure in WWE, 2006, I had, to, I had to have that point out to me. I thought for some reason it was 2008. <clears throat> but, of course, I was 2000 late on that reference. Dear God, that's an old reference. Alicia Fox does hit a really nice axe kick and has great Northern Lights suplex and actually is a good in-ring performer. I don't care for the crazy character. I don't really care for her promos. I'm certainly not going to say I'm the biggest fan of Alicia Fox, but for the tenure that she's had, yes, she's had drug issues <clears throat> and has addressed those. She's had some injury issues, just recently came back from an injury. And then looked like that injury got re-aggravated um, on Raw with the, 
you know, the crazy arm drags that Rhonda was doing to Alicia. Thankfully, Alicia seems to be okay, and that's great. Um, it, it honestly is. I, I don't want to make that seem like I'm not, you know, I'm not <clears throat> being, I'm not, like, you know, being sarcastic on that. I don't know if Alicia's time in WWE is going to be very much longer. Who knows? She could be released right after SummerSlam. There's rumors that they might release a whole bunch of talents after SummerSlam, even though they're in major signing uh, mode and they're, you know, signing Matt Riddle and a whole bunch of people. They just signed Keith Lee recently. And they're going to try to sign a whole bunch of women from the Mae Young Classic too. The ones that they don't already have signed. Which, <clears throat> I'm certainly interested to see what happens in May Young Classic 2. I have not been paying attention to any of the tapings. I think tapings are going on currently. And hopefully, or actually they might have already gone on. But hopefully, they we get some good performances out of, out of it. And yes, I will be reviewing those whenever they go up on the network. But with Alicia, it just seems like she's often forgotten about. You gotta use the women as... The, to their strengths. Is Alicia the best women's wrestler they've ever had? No. Is she the best character they've had? No. Is she the worst character they've had? No. Is she the worst wrestler they've had? No. <clears throat> For her tenure, she should be used a little better. She's had one title reign. I can't, I don't even remember when she won it. I remember when she lost it. She lost it at SummerSlam because that was Cameron's favorite WWE match. Cameron, you goddamn idiot. Um, so glad that Cameron's gone from WWE. Never should have been there. Um, but Alicia should be used a little better. Put her in a tag team if you need to. If you're going to eventually build up to a whole women's tag team division where you're going to have the champions go between Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. Alicia could team up with somebody and you could have a nice little tag, tag team there. I just feel like Alicia could be used better. Number four, Natalia. <clears throat> okay, this is where things get a little biased. Big fan of Natalia. Love Natalia. Been a big fan of her for years. Um, hated the farting gimmick. Hated the fact that they misused her quite a bit. Um, it. She was champion at one point, and then it took, like, what, another six, seven years for her to be champion again when she beat Naomi at SummerSlam 2017 and then just dropped it to Charlotte, like, three months later. Not even three months later. Yeah, she's currently featured in a spot with, you know, Ronda. <clears throat> um, and that's good. That that's really that's really good, by the way, you know, because apparently they are friends and Natty's been helping train her and has been doing pretty well. I mean, I, I, Nat, if you're going to learn from a veteran woman that's currently in WWE, Natty's really at the top of the list there. I mean, Natty, Mickey James, as far as like women that have been in WWE for so long. They can help you work that style because they know other styles also. But Natty just, to me, massively underutilized very often. She's in probably the role she's going to be in for a good while. I don't think there's any... I personally think she's going to screw over Ronda at SummerSlam. You're going to have that program. Ronda's going to beat Alexa. And then, you know, maybe at the September pay-per-view. And then Ronda's going to fight Natty at Evolution. Which would be kind of nice. Because I think they would, I think they would actually make it would be really, really nice. And even though they're friends, obviously, they can make good rivals. Natty, just to me, I just hate how she's been underutilized a lot. Should be used a whole lot better. <clears throat> now, get to the top two. And top two is going to be kind of quick. Hideo Itami. Look, Hideo has had. Oh, wait, actually, no, number three. I'm sorry. I'll mention Hideo in a minute. Number three, and this is a bit of a controversial choice Nikki Cross. Here's why. One, Nikki should be up on the main roster right now. After losing to Shayna Baszler to take over Chicago, she should have been called up. There's nothing left for her to do. What are you going to have her do? Come up right after... If she comes up right after SummerSlam, okay, you know, all bets are off. Maybe she should go to SmackDown. Um, I think they should put her with Sandy. I mean, why not? She's good on her own, but I mean, having her with Sandy helps because she is the X Factor. To um, to Sandy, even though Eric Young, Killian Day, and Alexander Wolf were a great trio, Nikki is the X factor for that. Nikki should have got the NXT Women's Title run. Unfortunately, she didn't because she was caught right in the whirlwind of Asuka being champion for about five thousand years. I love Asuka. I'm not, I'm not saying that Asuka shouldn't have been champion. It did get a little crazy her being champ her being champion for that long. And her and Nikki did have a blowaway match in June, uh, NXT TV last year, uh, last woman standing match. That was really fun. 
And Nikki Perilli got Shayna's best match out of her at um, at TakeOver Chicago 2. The match with Tony Storm um, on the UK special that, you know, that Shayna and Tony Storm had certainly wasn't bad. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. <coughs> but Nikki just, to me, she, it's been too long since she's been called up. When Sandy got called up, she should have been called up. Or at the very least, call her up after Shayna, you know, beat her. Just to me now, it feels like they're spinning their wheels with her. I get it. They want to build up some women and stuff like that. But just Nikki sporadically appearing on TV, it just seems like they could be doing so much more with her. I mean, I'm, I am worried what the main roster would do, but they're not really doing anything with her in NXT except beating random people. She beat Amber, uh, somebody named Amber Nova on the most recent NXT TV, which was actually a, which was a pretty good match. And I would like to see more of Amber Nova. I think she handled herself pretty well. <coughs> Sorry about my voice, by the way, folks. Allergies and heat and all that. But Nikki Cross does deserve better, and hopefully she will get better on the main roster. Um, you know, get better opportunities, I mean. Number two, Hideo Itami. I'm going to be brief with this. He's had a lot of injuries. And, yeah, stop, start, and that kind of stuff. His style also doesn't fit that well in WWE. But if you're going to try to be different and appeal to other markets, you could be using the guy a whole lot better. Now, he's in 205 Live and is probably where he's going to stay. I don't think they're going to have him on the main roster. I Like, well, you know, Raw or SmackDown at least very often. I just don't think they're going to. He should be Cruiserweight Champion at some point. But I don't know if that's really going to mean anything to him. I would not be surprised if his contract was up soon if he decided to leave. I mean, it's his business, his life, whatever he wants to do. But yeah, with Hideo, even with the injuries, it feels like they could have used him a whole lot better, and they haven't. And my God, <coughs> he just has not been used all that well. Pretty goddamn ridiculous. And then we go to number we go number one, Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas was NXT champion. Remember that? Because I had to remind myself of it, and I love Bo Dallas. I think Bo Dallas, the whole uh, all you have to do is Bo leave. Or Bo Leave and Bo. That was good shit. He had some going with it. Then they had him drop his uh, undefeated streak in 2014 to our truth of all people. Nothing against our truth, but you should not be beating young up and coming guys. <coughs> and then he just had all this crap go on where he wasn't doing anything. He was just losing random shit. He was losing on main event or he was losing on Raw. He was not even on the pay-per-views unless he was getting treated like a joke. Now, yeah, he's part of the B-team and that kind of stuff. Maybe he'll join his brother and be the new Wyatts or something like that. Or he'll be deleted and he'll be <coughs> Brother Bo. It just seems like they could have done so much better with Bo Dallas. And I just, I'm kind of a little bit upset that they took this guy that maybe was never going to be more than an IC champion... But they treat him like such a joke that now, I mean, yeah, he's over with Curtis Axel in the B team, but they're over his jokes when they actually are credible wrestlers and could be used better. Oh, well. I mean, it's just a shame. It just, it just shows why some NXT call-ups maybe aren't always the best. So, yeah, I apologize for my voice, by the way, folks. Heat and all that kind of stuff. But do you guys agree? Do you disagree with what I've said? Do you think that I, uh, do you think there are some that I missed? Well, like, comment, like, share, comment, subscribe, and just know that I'm going to have another list up some point, maybe before SummerSlam. But it's been Real Honesty with John Ritland, and I will see you soon.